Welcome to another edition of RCE. This is Brock Palin. Again, you can find us online at rce-cast.com. There's a nomination form. Also, take a moment to head out to iTunes and give us a rating there so more people are visible of us and find out more about the things that we are doing. You can also find all of our Twitter handles and blog accounts and everything else off the rce-cast.com website. Also, find all the old back episodes there and everything else. This is the second time ever since the very first episode that I am going solo. Jeff unfortunately couldn't be here this time, but he will be back for the next show. We have with us today the group that is working on the Perf Expert Performance Optimization Tool. Uh, Guys, take a moment to introduce yourselves. Hi, uh, I'm Jim Brown, and uh, I'm probably the oldest living settler in high-performance computing. And we have our two associates here, and here they go. Uh, hello, my name is Ashay, Ashay Rane. I am currently a PhD student at the uh, Department of Computer Science here at UT, UT Austin. Um, and the way I am associated with this project was that uh, prior to joining uh, UTCS as a PhD student, I was working on the Perfect Spirit project, uh, handling the most of the research and development along with uh, uh, Dr. Jim Brown. Hi, I'm Leo Fialio, and I'm the last acquisition from James Brown's group, just to take care of the gap that I should make when he left to become a full-time student. And, well, basically, yeah, this and the future of Perfect Spurt and other tools that we are working here. And I need to mention one more person who is not here, who was the person who... With me, really founded the project, and his name is Martin Bircher, and he is a, an, assist, an associate professor of computer science at Southwest Texas State University now, and we started the project together several years ago. Okay, so the project we're talking about today is Perf Expert. Uh, can one of you give us a bit of a background of exactly what is Perf Expert? Well, Perf Expert is a simple comprehensive performance tool. Performance optimization has four stages, measurement, analysis and diagnosis, recommendation of optimizations, and implementing the optimizations. And right now, PerfExpert automates the first of those, all, first three of those four phases. And our goal when we started was KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. So, and it, you, you invoke it with one line, and it uh, gives, you, gives you recommendations on what you need to do to improve your program at the current time. So, why, why do you think uh, the Perf Expert project is, is better than existing tools out there? Well, what's better? Better is in the eye of the beholder. If you are an expert in performance evaluation and compilers and code structures, then... There's no doubt that you can do very well with HPC Toolkit or Tau or IMP or any of the other many tools. If you're a domain expert and you need help, Perf Expert is for you. The other tools give you measurements, tell you where the, the code, where the associate the measurements with the code, and then quit. Ashe, would you like to add to that? Uh, yeah, so. Uh as was apparent through many of our personal experiences while using these performance tools, is the case that um, these tools are really good at measurement and uh, they can give you a ton of information, but you need to have some sort of a background to be able to understand what is it that you should be looking for. Otherwise, you might just be lost in the myriad of information that's out there. And uh, so in that sense, uh, the thing that we really wanted to work on was building some kind of an analysis engine on top of these measurement tools. Uh, So uh, given all of this uh, data, instead of just showing it to the user as just a series of numbers essentially arranged in some row and column format, we wanted to to find out if we could um, tell the user that, you know, out of all of this, this is something that's really important. And... Uh, convey it in a more intuitive sense. So, you know, uh, so one of the things that we do in the analysis that we do in PerfExpert is to break down the overall performance into multiple different categories. Um, and when I say multiple, it's actually just a handful. It's just six of them. And through those categories, we basically aim to uh, tell the user that, you know, uh, 
uh, it is your say for example it is your program variables or your memory or say your floating point execution which is currently a bottleneck and this is how you can fix it so um, so it is the analysis uh, where perfectspur differs from many of these tools and also the the recommendation process and the suggestions for optimization yeah. i'll add something that uh is, is how, how come we happened to start this project in the beginning? In this, uh, August of 2008, I went to a, a meeting of National Science Foundation computer users called TerraGrid. There was a panel there where all the people who have performance tools, IMP and Tau and HPC Toolkit, all gave presentations. There were about 100 and some odd people in the room. And when the time for questions came, I asked the audience, not the panel, how many of you have used any of these tools? Three people raised their hand. Then I went around and asked why, and it said it's too complicated. I don't know enough about architectures and compilers to use these tools. And then that set me off. And that's how it started. So is PerfExpert actually another tool like Pappy or something like that that's reading hardware counters? Or you're, it sounds like you're trying to make something that's a little bit more approachable for the average uh, domain scientist, as you referred to. Well, actually, uh, it relies on some counters, like from, for example, it could be Poppy or it could be Vtune or um, using the framework of uh, HPC Toolkit. But actually, what it tries to give to the user is a, just a summary of, okay, this section of your code we have a problem here, we have a bottleneck here, and we can work on that. And how we can work? And we give some recommendations. It's simple like that. The point is, we run, we take some measures, we analyze them, and then say, okay, you can improve this code, this section here, and this other section with those recommendations. That's why it's, it's really different than the other tools. In other words, we address a different audience than the other tools. The other two, Pappy, our HPC toolkit, or Tau, are wonderful and powerful systems. In fact, we depend on them. We depend on them to do our measurements for us. What we do is we add intelligence, human-like intelligence, knowledge of compilers, architecture, code segments, and things like that to the measurements. So our added value is not measurement. Our added value is knowledge. You can think of PerfExpert as a small, dedicated expert system which interprets performance measurements. So are you getting information more like at the function level, kind of like a, a GProf type thing, or what, what kind of information are you actually reading back from these tools? Yeah. So uh, currently in the PerfExpert release that's out there, we, we build on top of the measurements that are provided to us by HPC Toolkit. And uh, HPC Toolkit gives us measurements at the level of functions and loops. So that's our level of granularity that we have for our measurements and analysis. Okay, so how about we expand on this a little bit? If, say I'm a domain scientist and I work on something and it's like, man, I'd, I'd really like to see why my, I've, say I've got my prototype version and I want to try to improve it. I run it through PerfExpert. What's the process for doing that, actually? Mm -hmm. uh, so the first step would, of course, be uh, to run your application with PerfExpert. Or, um, in fact, if, if we can go even a step beyond, even a step earlier than that, uh, when you install PerfExpert, there are certain things that are done as part of the installation process to figure out uh, certain details about your architecture. So, uh, say some latencies to certain instructions or to your caches. So, really, the whole measurement process starts at the installation itself. Um, but, of course, this is all handled transparently. Uh, when you actually run your application with PerfExpert, um, your, uh, your application is run in uh, sort of a controlled environment uh, multiple number of times to... Uh, to read certain values of these performance events. So, for instance, how many uh, cache misses occurred, how many uh, instructions were executed, how many branches were taken or mispredicted, and so on. And um, all of these measurements are gathered into a single file 
um, which is essentially produced by HPC Toolkit. Um, that's the measurement phase. The next step is to run the analysis, um, and you do that using a special command in PerfectSpurt. And that, um, for your application, will tell you uh, the hotspots in your code. Okay. Um, along with these hotspots, it also, as I said, it runs some analyses, uh, and it tells you the overall performance in terms of certain number of categories, these six categories as such. These six categories are um, data accesses, instruction accesses, data and instruction TLB, uh, floating point accesses, and, and branches. Uh, so it so it gathers these measurements and tells you in a more intuitive format as to uh, what exactly the problem could be. Now you could decide if you if you, if you have additional information or if you are aware of the architectural details, you could just take the analysis output and uh, try to figure out what's wrong with the code and how you could improve it. Uh, but we do go uh, one step further and uh, in the next phase, which is the recommendation generation phase, uh, we match these. Uh, perfect expert outputs with uh, a database of recommendations that we have built into perfect expert uh, and that's essentially the last stage where we suggest certain changes that you could make to your application that is the detail if you're a user and you don't really need to know all that detail and you don't really want to try to interpret you haven't the knowledge base to interpret the data what, what can happen is you issue one command line that encapsulates your, that initiates your job script multiple times. At the end, you get recommendations out. So in effect, without modifying your program, without annotating it, just taking the existing, or recompiling it, just taking the existing binary and having one command line, you come out with recommendations for how to improve your code, where and what to do. So does that mean that PerfExpert only has to like understand the language itself? Like right now, PerfExpert only supports C, or it only supports Fortran, or it only runs in Java. Like, does it care? Actually, uh, PerfExpert don't have to understand the language itself because it relies on the uh, HPC toolkit to extract the structure of the application, and so we can uh, find the bottlenecks on the loops, basically on functions and all that. And so we don't have to understand, but you have to correlate this information with the source code, which we use uh, HPC toolkit for that. We do, however, you, we cannot deal with interpreted languages. We have to have a binary. And in fact, for, and the bottom line is we can deal with Fortran, C, C++, or any language for which there is a compiler which generates a binary which we can execute and measure. And it works with any compiler, by the way. Okay, that was going to be the next thing I was going to ask. Okay, so it doesn't care about the compiler, and it basically just needs a compiled language. And so one install of HPC Toolkit and PerfExpert together can support all your necessary um, compiler combinations? That's right. Uh, so this, there's one thing that I need to add, and uh, this falls into a little bit more detail, but um, the thing is, uh, when it comes to these optimization recommendations, we have these recommendations either in the form of um, code changes that you could make to your program, or in the form of compiler flags, because, you know, really, if you think about it, uh, the compiler is the tool which should be uh, generating the optimal code. So instead of you having to make these manual optimizations by hand, uh, why not give some compiler options instead? Now that said, uh, the current database of our uh, recommendations for these optimization suggestions uses or shows uh, compilers for the Intel, com oh, sorry, flags for the Intel compiler. Um, uh, we've thought about including uh, flags for GCC as well, but as it turns out, for most scientific applications, people use the Intel compiler, and we've, we've stick to that. Oh, so this actually gives me an idea. So you have regular code changes recommendations. You have compiler flag recommendations. 
Do you have anything like number of the compilers have pragmas for like telling the compiler it's safe to vectorize this? Um, do you have anything like that included? Uh, not at the current time, but we we do have some catch some phrases that tell people that that's something they should be doing. You want to add to that, Ashay? Uh, yeah, so uh, one of the good things is that uh, the person who designed the original database, which is um, Martin Bircher, uh he uh, made it in such a way that it is completely extensible and it's it's easily modifiable. So, uh, so coming to think about it, uh, adding these pragmas, uh, indicating that okay, certain loops are dependence free and can be vectorized. Uh, I believe that should be an easy extension to the current database that we have. In, in fact, we, we'll come back to this later because we're in process of doing s some things that do in modify the source code automatically. And we, and, and when we deal with issues like that we're going to come to later, like optimizing for GPUs, you have to introduce these pragmas into the code. Okay, so this brings up another question. You guys are extracting information from each, or HPC Toolkit is extracting information from the application being run, and you're analyzing it. Why does the compiler optimizer itself not catch these issues? If you're able to present an example of a code change, why doesn't the compiler just make that change? Well, remember two things. Number one is the, the al algorithm for determining the optimal code is exponentially difficult. And so compilers do not use a, a complete algorithm for determining optimal code. They have a set of patterns which they can recognize. If your code, and by the way, these scientific users are very ingenious and inventive, does not happen to fall in the pattern they recognize, uh, the compiler can't deal with it. The second thing is that compilers don't have the information we have. We have all this information about runtime. They only, the compiler has only the information it can extract from the source code. So that includes compilers with like profile guided optimization? Those compilers with profile guided optimization don't have the opportunity to do the kind of analyses that we have, and they're pretty uncommon. The, big, the standard commercial compilers don't do much of that. Okay, so what is some of the most common recommendations you're you're finding that PerfExpert pretty much the problems you're finding for most of the performance bottlenecks fall into category X? Uh, that category X would be the memory accesses. Um, as it turns out, uh, many many of our uh, of the codes that we run with PerfExpert uh, turn out to be bottlenecked on memory. Um, you see. Uh, this actually goes back to uh, uh, why did we decide what should be the focus of PerfExpert. Essentially, uh, if, you, if you think about it, PerfExpert is addressing problems that you have regarding performance within a single node. Um, so it looks at uh, your floating point execution, the efficiency of your memory accesses, uh, branches, and so on. And as it turns out, um, you know, as as it actually happens to be the case, uh, memory is still catching up. Uh, it's still it's still lagging behind uh, the CPU speeds. Uh, maybe in the years to come, we might see uh, some improvements in the form of 3D stack memory. But um, as of now, the way commercial systems are built, uh, that's that's the primary bottleneck. And uh, when you go when you go to multi-threaded codes, um, the the effect that uh, using these individual threads on the available memory bandwidth uh, is quite extreme in the sense uh, the, the amount of contention that um, that occurs when you use these multiple threads grows quite significantly. And so for many of the codes that we work with, we find that as you scale to say four threads, six threads, eight threads, then you start seeing memory as the primary bottleneck. Um, and that's where, uh, in fact, if you look at the optimization database, the size of our database is actually proportional to what we are seeing on the field. So you'll find a lot of optimization dealing with uh, caches or prefetches uh, in order to improve the memory performance. 
let me return for a minute to your previous question. Uh, we actually run the application about five or six times each time we record four performance counters, which is all you could record in a single pass for many chips. So compilers just don't have the time, at users, <laughs> compilers don't have the time to do that or are not set up to do that. We just have a lot more information than they have. Okay, so one thing you mentioned there was uh, you're basically measuring the performance of an application on a single node and that it's becoming more important to make sure to actually run the multi, you know, multi-threaded so that you see the total memory memory contention when using all the cores on a single socket that are possibly sharing memory channels. Right. What about distributed memory applications? Does your database include things like MPI communication? No, that's not, we don't do that yet. That was not a problem on the Ranger architecture, and we don't expect it to be a problem on the uh, Stampede architecture. With modern architectures, the, the networks tend to be fast enough that the two problems come in terms of in, in, intra-node and in terms of I.O. systems. Those are the places where there are current bottlenecks for the most part. But, and we have talked about extending PerfExpert, and perhaps we'll talk about that later. So does PerfExpert not even support MPI applications currently? Of course it supports MPI applications. That's what most people on Ranger use MPI. People use on, their, on Ranger used MPI for intra-node parallelism. You put 16 processes on a node. MPI processes. Yeah, so essentially to clarify, um, PerfExpert does work with MPI applications. Uh, the only thing is that it will measure the performance of your intra-node execution only. It won't take into account um, uh, your network usage uh, in the form of these messages. Uh, that said, say for instance, you uh, say you have a very naive version of um, a matrix multiply code, let's say, uh, which does all-to-all -all communication. And if your communication itself is taking a lot of time, uh, because of the function, the all-to-all say communication becoming a hotspot, it will show up in the perfect expert output, uh, but it will be analyzed from the perspective of your internode performance. Um, so yeah, to, to, to summarize, essentially perfect expert does uh, work with MPI applications. Um, uh, there, are, um, there is one change that you need to make to the script. Um, basically include the MPI exec or MPI run command in uh, the perfect spin job script to make it work with MPI, but that's pretty much the only change that you have to do. And it also works, of course, with OpenMP or pthreads or any of the other uh, internal, uh, node internal parallelism. Okay, so the perf expert isn't going to choke on trying to measure performance counters for MPI run. It will actually get to the underlying executable that's, being operated on. Absolutely. That's correct, yeah. yeah. And in fact, uh, you can extend that notion to just about any shell script, which will ultimately invoke a binary. So if you have some wrappers around your binary, which, say, set up the workflow or something of that sort, uh, then PerfExpert will still work with... Uh, PerfExpert Perf will still measure the correct portions of your binary instead of measuring the shell script execution. Okay, so you mentioned that a perf expert will actually run your application multiple times to accumulate different counters because the CPUs can only measure so many counters at a time. What is the overhead of perf expert then? Well, uh, first of all, there is the overhead of the tool we are using to take the measures, which is HPC two kits, and so it's one point five times percent, one to five percent, one to five percent. Sorry, <laughs> and. More than that, we have to run. That's another limitation of the current architectures. We only can have four. We only can measure, take measure of four performance counters at a time, and so we have to run maybe six or five times the application to take measure of all the performance counts we have. But if you can uh, take measure of more than those performance counts at a time, we can reduce it to four, for example. So we can. We can understand that we have to run the code five or six times, and every time you run the code, it is one to five percent. 
that's actually not very much overhead at all compared to sampling type performance counters and other types. That's actually really low. That's that's right, which is why we love HPC Toolkit. We well, yeah, HP suit. HPC, the HPC Toolkit people at Rice, John Miller Crumley and his team are our great friends, and we are their we are their most widely used user. I think I'm going to have to get them on the show next. They, I would <laughs> I would recommend that and tell them that the Perf Expert team suggested it. <laughs> Will do. Okay, so. How does Perf Expert present information? So it presents these code recommendations, but does it actually just give me a summary of kind of how my application is, where it's waiting? Well, it gives you it gives you a simple bar diagram telling you how well you're doing on each of the six categories. And if you are a fairly sophisticated user and need to know that information, it will tell you it. It has a bar diagram that tells you from horrible to good. And if you get to good, you needn't worry about anything. But if you're anywhere beyond fair, that means you have a bad some issue with that particular piece of code. And remember, Perfect Expert ties its measurements to a particular loop or a particular function. It resolves, each of its measurements are resolved to a loop or a function. So it will tell you to begin with, I have, and you can tell it how many functions you want. I want the top three functions that are causing me problems. In the case, it will give you that same output for those three functions and no more. If you don't want to look at that data, you don't have to, it will just tell you what you need, what it thinks you need to do with your to your code to make it work better. So what if I have one of these codes where, you know, the he most heavy function is uh, a very, very large collection of code? Can I actually then drill inside that function and look at loops and functions inside of it? Uh, yeah, actually. So, um, so that's 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 essentially another reason why we really like HPC Toolkit is because um, it gives us this information at the granularity of uh, of loops. Now, now uh, realize that if we have a a code. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you have some code which is running for a really long time, um, it is either because you're you have a tight loop in there, um, or you're using recursion. Now, uh, many of the codes that we deal with uh, from the scientific community um, don't use recursion, and so it's an, it's actually using loops. And since the um, since HPC toolkit gives us measurements at the granularity of loops. Uh, we can still, you know, even if it's a really big function, uh, it will ultimately give us uh, information as to which loop in the entire function is causing uh, the slowdown or is taking up a lot of time. So that way you can you can drill down into a particular, uh, uh, into a smaller portion of the code. Uh, that said, it's, um, uh, you'll find a lot of people in the performance community uh, advising not really against but uh, but asking you to be a little careful once you try to go down to a level which is finer than the loop granularity so um, because of the way these architectures work it's hard to say that a, a particular instruction was the reason for your performance bottleneck because uh, there could be delays and say you know when these counters get incremented um, and so uh, staying at the granularity of loops is a much, much better idea than going any deeper. Yeah. You don't want to go down to the statement level. A loop nest is a, about the lowest level you really want to go to. Okay, so it gives me little you know, bar charts. Uh, you also mentioned that you like to you know, keep this thing as simple as possible. Is this like a GUI interface or something that's you know point and click, but then my users have to have an X server installed and teach them how to do X forward and all that kind of stuff from oh, the cluster head node, uh, or just, is it different than that? Just log in with S, with a standard SSH, SSH and uh, text scripts, and it'll come out as a text script. You can see it on your screen. Just Ooh, ASCII, on. ASCII art. Yes, yeah. ASCII art. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put it. But no explaining Windows desktop users how to get an X server and do all that stuff. No, no. that's that's yeah, that, no, no way. Yeah. We we are we follow the Kiss principle. 
we are ourselves, some of us, at least me, are, you know, we're sort of simple-minded. One, one of the reasons to don't have this visualization maybe in the user desktop is maybe because you have to run the application on the target machine that you're running. You want to run this this software, okay? And so maybe it's it could be interesting to have the analysis in a different computer just in terms of visualization. But you're already running a software in the target machine. And so we can put the output there and that's okay. That's enough. So it seems like multiple things have been mentioned about architecture possibly being architecture specific recommendations. Um, does is there a way to like run Perfexpert? Well, one, does it really is it really architecture dependent, or is there a way to kind of like run it in a this is a generic good good well, best practice? Now, this is a best practice. Our our recommendations are architecture dependent, and however, as Ashe mentioned before. When you install Perfexpert, we automatically, as a part of the installation script, run a set of micro benchmarks that generate a characterization of the architecture in terms of about a dozen or fewer parameters that the user knows nothing about. They are just like black magic. They just appear because the script generates them, and they characterize the architecture, and we use those. And we are certainly not architecture independent. Yeah, so uh, I think that needs to be elaborated slightly. So um, uh, a few of the things that we do measure at the time of installation are uh, uh, latencies to certain instructions or to certain components of your architecture, say your caches or uh, the TLBs. Um, we also, and this is actually in some ways more important than these latencies, we also measure uh, which performance events are available on that particular architecture. Now, as it turns out, you know, even if you consider a single vendor, say, uh, say Intel, uh, and if you consider the the performance events that are available in one generation of a processor, and if you look at a different generation, uh, there, it's it's hard to say, or it's it's hard to say with confidence that you will have the same set of performance events supported across these different generations. Um, so we do measure uh, which events are available and find out which one, which which ones among those are of interest to us. And uh, uh, as Dr. Brown said, in one of uh, in in these measurements, in these analysis outputs, we we basically have a bar chart. Uh, now I, I figured that you might be interested in knowing about this. That um, the way we figure out whether your performance is good, bad, or horrible is by is 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 based on uh, the 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 measurements that we obtain from these micro benchmarks. So, uh, so during installation time, we measure what is the best case performance that you could get on this machine. And so, all of your analysis output is tailored to that particular machine. Um, so, uh, uh, if you have um, so, so um, if you if you have the analysis output on one particular machine, um, then uh, it's uh, it's customized essentially to that uh, to that architecture. Okay, so you're telling me that, but back when Perfexpert wasn't compiler dependent, like say some other tools may be where you need to build it you know, with every compiler that you want people to be able to use it with. If I have say, you know, I have one login environment and I have two sets of users each with different generations of hardware, I need to install a copy of Perfexpert on. When I install, I need to run it on each hardware type, and I need to have two installs, one for each group for their different sets of hardware. Yes. For example, at TAC, we have three systems that are used on a large scale. Ranger, which is about to go away, is on AMD chips. Lone Star, which is on uh, Westmere Intel chips. And Stampede, which is on Sandy Bridge chips. Now, of course... Every piece of software for each one of those machines is distinct anyway. So the compiler for the Westmere chips is different. So Perfexpert is just like the compilers. You have to have a different one for each architecture. Okay, so that actually brings up a point. Uh, Perfexpert is hosted uh, on a TAC website. Um, it, most documentation refers to TAC machines. You mentioned it started at, at a TerraGrid conference. I assume you know it's going forward with all this Exceed equipment like Stampede. 
Um, does PerfExpert, since it's all architecture dependent and everything, it, does it really only run on tax systems, or is this something you can use anywhere? Well, it's just starting here, but now we have more than 50 sites across the world using it. And so if somebody wants just to try it, can you know go to the TAC website, download it, and try it on your computer. And we actually can help you to do that if you need. And we have more than 50 sites today, and it's growing. That's the point. It's, you can use it. You can use it on your machine. Okay. One, I've actually already installed it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys have answered some of my questions, and some of these questions I've asked have been loaded based on my own experience. Yep. So one other thing is uh, we, we've alluded to a number of things. So you guys have done a lot of this stuff. What is the, what are the recommendations you would make to somebody who wants to sit down and run their application with Perf Expert? Like, don't share a node with anybody else. Keep the hardware type constant. You know what, what are like the make sure you do these things or your to make your data are correct. The only thing you really need to do carefully is to design the input data set properly. We do provide instructions on this, and I hope you found them, by the way. You need to have your data sets sized so that whatever scale you run, the, the amount of data which is on a single node is representative of the volume of data that you will have if you run a production run. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, the uh, keep the amount of data proportional on every processor because things like a matrix multiply scales, the number of memory requests to flop scales with the size of the data. You got it. So, And what you want to do is you, you typically don't want to run PerfExpert on a 1,000 nodes. <laughs> you want to run PerfExpert on two nodes, 10 nodes, 16 nodes, because otherwise the data set begins to be very large and the processing time will get large. But it doesn't make any difference since we're basically just optimizing intra-node. As long as you have the proper amount of data, representative amount of data, on a node, the recommendations that are made are valid. Okay, so what if I'm a compiler manufacturer? You said right now mostly it's Intel compiler, you understand. But there's a couple other compilers out there. What if I wanted to build a database and, you know, contribute it to the project? How would I go about doing that? Well, we give you, you can download the database. It's just a piece of Java code. And you have, first thing you have to do is make sure you've got the data so that the accurate references to the proper entries in the database are made. So you'll have to know something about what you're doing. You can't just add to the database without adding to the measurements or adding to the interpretation of the measurements to make the recommendations valid and effective. But given that, we, we regularly add to the database different optimizations. We we're, just have figured out how to automatically compute the sizes for tiling of loop tiling, for example. So we can now compute those automatically. So, but it's not a matter of just adding to the database, although you can just add to it. It's a matter of having the data and the rule set. There's a, a set of rules for interpreting the perfect expert data. It's written in Java, which is interpreted, and it picks out which recommendations are indicated by the particular patterns. For example, if you have a very large contribution to your performance bottleneck from a TLB miss, then you almost certainly have a loop, have to do a loop interchange because you, you're taking very long strides. So, so you, does this make sense now? Yeah, yeah. So what about the process of like the license of the code? Like if I'm a compiler manufacturer and I go through all this work for my hardware and think I've got things and I want to contribute it back. Is that possible? We'll be happy to accept collabor offers of collaboration from anybody. And if they want to take on the job of 
of adding to the to the software perfect expert it's open source they can do it yeah. so what what is the license of a uh, perfect expert uh, yeah it's uh, it's currently released under lgpl uh, version 3 i believe uh, so yeah, uh, we've recently had one request from a company, uh, and that's when we uh, we went back on. Uh, we essentially went back to the drawing board and figured out what license we should have and how should we release it. So, uh, as things stand at the moment, um, uh, I believe it's it's uh, it's open to uh, any sort of tweaking or tinkering from any commercial vendors. It's subject to the NSF license. If the vendor, this license is the one that's approved by UT and the NSF, so if the vendor modifies it, anything that he takes from us has to be, continued to be released as open source. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the future of PerfExpert. Sounds like you're constantly adding to this database. What's some of the big things you want to kind of extend and add to PerfExpert in the future? I'm going to mention two of them, and I'm going to pass the microphone to Ashley and Leonardo. The first one is we have been working for quite a while now on extending our analyses and recommendations to uh, graphical processing units, GPUs, and we have done some work on that, and I'll let Ashay say a few words about what we've added to... Okay. I'll ask Ashay to say a few words about that project. Sure. Um, so, uh, to give you a broader picture, um, we have these fantastic compute devices, these GPUs, which can do a lot of work in, um, in sort of these massively parallel ways. Uh, the question is, uh, you know, you have that hardware, but then... Well, first thing, you have to program it, which can be hard. And But even before that, even before you actually get to programming it, because of the high amount of effort that is involved in converting your code from C, C++, or Fortran to use CUDA calls, essentially, um, is that uh, you need to know which portions uh, do you um, do you want to convert? You know, which which portions of the code are you, you should should you be converting or to use CUDA? Um, and that's where we thought we could help with uh, some of the analysis that we do with Perfect Expert. So um, we have uh, the runtime information from these uh, from these performance events. Uh, so the idea is, can we find out specific characteristics about the source code and uh, make an estimation as to how well this core segment will run on the GPU, or whether it just you know not scale, or whether it won't run at all, or with, you know, it's how hard is it to to convert that? So in that sense, we look at um, the floating point execution efficiency, the data structures, scale uh, the scalability as well, and uh, we try to make a recommendation. Um, uh, about the particular code segment as to its suitability to run on the GPU. We've had a couple of papers on this. We've, um, along those lines, in fact, um, uh, just like the GPUs, um, uh, the other big hardware that we have here at TAC are these mics, these uh, many integrated core architectures from Intel. And um, uh, in some ways, you could say they're, they're similar because they they... Uh, they require that your code be massively parallelizable. Uh, and so this process of recommending certain segments to run on GPUs could also be changed slightly and run on uh, and run for the mics. Uh, that's essentially uh, what we've been working on. Uh, in this context, I might mention that we are working on adding, recommending what fragments to add. But the other big thing we're doing is we have just almost completed the first prototype implementation of a project which actually automatically generates the recommendations. And I want to pass this to Leonardo because he's the one who's been doing that pioneering work. Yeah, actually what we are, we are prototyping here is uh, to apply those recommendations after uh, we get this information from Perfect Experts. And Maybe the information from Perfect Expert is not, uh, how can I say, we need some more information and we have another tool for that, for that that we call MacPo, and from MacPo we can extract different um, memory access patterns 
And we use this information to parameterize the code transformation we want to apply. And so we have the recommendation from PerfectExpert. We parameterize this uh, information. For example, if you have to apply uh, loop tiling, okay, what's the tile size? We have to tile this loop section. And so we can finally apply all those recommendations automatically with the Optitran 2 that we are prototyping now. And we can restart the optimization process with PerfectExpert. And so we have this kind of optimization loop that after actually uh, one round or two rounds, we can find, okay, this is the situation, this is the source code where we can find the best performance for this architecture specifically. And of course, we can, uh, we have the three databases at this moment. The first database is for uh, recommendations from Perfect Expert. The second database is the number, the, the kind of uh, code segments that we can recognize and what kind of optimization we can do over this code. And we can extend all those three databases to support different optimizations on, uh, on the original source code. The, there are two, two things I'd like to summarize. Number one is, our ultimate goal is the user runs a single command line and gets back a program which is pretty closely optimized to a particular architecture automatically. Now, this is going to take a long time. We currently have implemented just three commonly occurring optimizations. So don't hold your breath waiting for us to do this to a lot, you know, completely. But that's our goal. And that's where we want to go with Perfect Expert in the next year or two. And I should mention there's one other tool, the MacPo tool that uh, Leonardo alluded to, which was Ashe's contribution. He generated this just about on his own. And it adds to the the code intent, the code specifications that you get from Perfect Expert, it characterizes the execution behavior of each data structure in each code hotspot, and it is the source of most of the improvements in the database and the additions to the database that we are currently doing. And at some point in time, you might want to talk to Ashe about <laughs> MacPo. Now, one more thing: in the very long run, I want to do an end-to-end -end system for optimizing memory transfer, starting with the disk and going all the way down to the CPUs. But, you know, I probably won't live that long. <laughs> <laughs> There's always another bottleneck. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. The other thing we are going to do in the shorter run is we have to build up a library of optimizations for the Knight's Corner mic chips because they're, the optimization set will be quite different than that from the conventional multiprocessors, multi-core chips. Okay, well, thanks a lot for your time, everybody. And uh, where can people find PerfExpert and get more information? There is a website, which is www.tac.utexas.edu slash PerfExpert. Okay. Thanks again for your time. Thank you much. Thank you much, Brock. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.